Welcome everybody to the Legs Matter session on how to check your feet. Um, I'm really pleased to have been asked to come and join today and I hope that uh, you'll find this informative and get, take away some tips, five tips hopefully at least. Um, they say you can only really take home three but I'd really like to push you out to about five if I can. Um, but it's a real honour to be here and I hope that the next sort of half an hour uh, is useful to you. Please uh, put some questions in the chat or in the questions. Um, on Facebook or on this live stream. I'll try my best to try and answer them, um, but I'm going to share my screen with you now and uh, get on with the presentation. So an introduction to foot health. My name is Joanne Casey. I'm a podiatrist. I work for the Royal College of Podiatry and I'm also a diabetes foot practitioner at King's College Hospital in London. And today I'm just going to chat to you a little bit about foot health and Hopefully my screen moves on. Oh, there we go. A little bit about foot health and what to do to check your feet. So the aim of this session will be to how to do a foot check. And that's the five points I want you to try and remember today. Um, and to look at some good foot care regimes, so how we can maintain those feet and what to do if we identify any problems or changes. I've tried to aim this session a little bit at um, a patient, if you're a patient out there, um, also at a healthcare professional as well. Uh, so I'm trying to use some language between the two. There might be some tests that you might not think that you're able to carry out as a patient, but you should expect if you see a healthcare professional. So I hope it gives a nice broad range of things for you to look at. Um, and hopefully this session will actually help you build the skills needed to reduce the risk of foot problems developing. And that's the aim really of Legs Matter Week this week, is looking at prevention, preventing everything, coming back from maybe a problem that you've had, building resilience, um, but preventing the foot problem in the first place. So a few foot facts, podiatrists love foot facts. Um, the foot is a, is a unique structure. Um, it adapts for standing, walking, running, and back when we were sort of Neanderthal times, we were walking on different terrains, grass, rocks, stones. Nowadays, we're in trainers, heels, shoes, walking on concrete, pavement slabs, wooden floors, carpets. Um, and the foot is adapted over this whole time. It's evolved with us, and actually, it's an amazing structure. Um, I like feet, that's probably why I'm a podiatrist, but I find the foot a really fascinating structure and probably for me, one of the most important structures. And it's with us really, of course, from toddlers crawling around on sofas, uh, right the way through to the end of our life. So feet are keep us mobile and that's really hugely important. The average adult will walk over 75,000 miles. That's uh, just over three times around the world. I haven't tried it. Um, I'm building up my mileage. I'm trying my 10,000 10, steps a day if I can. And that's always a good tip to try and get going. But we do walk a long, long way. So it's really important that we keep things healthy and uh, our feet clean, fun. Uh, so then foot anatomy then. So I'm in a working office at the minute. So if people pop in, you might just have to excuse it. But um, I'm, so foot anatomy, this is the inside of the foot. If you were to strip back the layer of skin, muscle, tissue, then you'd see all these bones here. It comprised of 26 bones, 33 joints, more than 100 muscles, lots of ligaments, all working together to try and tie up the foot and to allow us to propulse, take each step, um, propulse, and then of course uh, land. So going through that whole gait cycle. And did you know, another foot fact, nearly a quarter of all the bones in the body were in the feet. So there you go for your pub quiz. Uh, but that's the foot there, really intricate bones as well. So it's really important that our feet work properly. It's tiny little bones, strong muscles, and lots of weight that we put through the feet. Uh, you know, say the average person might be nine, 10 stone. Think how much weight goes through that tiny structure. So it's a really important part of our body. So this is our five point assessment then. This is what I really want to try and sort of bring home today is, um, Looking at shape, what do we do when we look at our feet? So we look at the shape. I'll go into it in a little bit more detail in a moment, but just briefly, we assess the foot for any deformities. We look at skin and nails. So we look at actually what does the skin and nails look like on our feet? We check between the toes. We look, we pop the socks and shoes off. Socks, you must get your socks off every day. Um, if you're a nurse in a hospital, you know, really take the, the TED stockings off. If you're at home, make sure you ask a carer to help you take your socks off. Look at your feet. Are they any different to what they were before? Circulation, so that's the third one. Do we look at, we look at the blood supply to the feet by observing and feeling the feet. So it's not always necessarily a really high powered test, but you can do it from just looking and feeling. So that's the third one. 
fourth one sensation. Anybody can assess, assessing if the person can feel by a simple touch test, you know, can you feel your feet? Can you tell if the bath water is too hot? So it's important that we know sensation and also footwear. And that's our number five. So the five things to take away from today, shape, skin and nails, circulation, sensation and footwear. So if we go a bit more in depth, we look at shape. Shape here, you can see there's all sorts of different shapes. You'd think probably that the, the top right hand corner is normal looking foot. That's probably correct. Look over to the left, you've got a very high arch foot. You've got some curly toes, overlapping of toes there. And of course, the feet in the bottom right hand corner, you can see the ankles have become very swollen with the lymphedema. You can see some bunions there as well. And the feet look a bit flat. So it's really important that we look at shape because if we don't look at shape, we might put the wrong shoes on. Or we might develop a pressure problem um, because we, we've got a bony prominence that isn't being accounted for if we're lying in bed for a long period of time. So we need to think about shape. We then look at skin and nails. So the skin is our protective barrier. It protects us from environmental hazards such as um, toxins, UV light, so we don't get sunburn. Um, it, it just protects the, the, the soft tissues and the structures underneath. It helps us thermoregulate, so it helps us uh, through sweating, keeps us cool. Um, we've got fats that are in there to help us insulate our feet, so, that, so we need to make sure the skin is intact to allow all these things to happen. Well, there's lots of nerve fibres that sit within the, the top layers of the skin, um, and that allows us to feel temperature, pressure, pain and vibration, all of things that are important to allow that fight or flight reflex. If you accidentally put your foot into a hot bath, you'd pull it out straight away. If you don't have that, then actually you wouldn't pull it away and actually you might end up with a burn. So it's the skin's important to maintain its, its sensory function. And of course, I've mentioned before, it gets rid of waste products as well as sweat. So what do we watch out for when it comes to the skin and nails? We look for bruises and discoloration. And this can be a daily check. You know, look for a bruise. Was that bruise there yesterday? Did I bang myself? Oh, I didn't realize I banged myself. Can you feel your feet? There's discoloration there now. Maybe you've been um, sat or in bed for a period of time and you've now got a little bruise on your heel, which you may have heard over the week is, is probably pressure related. Um, and it might then go and develop into an ulcer. We look for cracks and splits and cuts. Quite common in the summer if we're wearing flip-flops then, or, you know, or open-toed shoes, we might get a drier foot. We might get some skin cracks around our heels. We might get cracks in between the toes if we've worn a, a thong type of flip-flop. Um, we might get a, a cut, you might drop something on your foot. So check out for cuts, splits and cracks. Because if the skin's open, then actually it's a portal for infection. We might have an ulcer, we might have had a previous ulcer, so we need to make sure that doesn't re-ulcerate. Um, rashes, of course, we might get stung by some stinging nettles, it causes a rash, we itch it, we then break the skin. Um, we might get some new lesions, a new freckle that doesn't look quite right, or a mole that's looking, that's bled a bit. That mole wasn't there yesterday, so just keep an eye. Is this, is this what my feet looked like yesterday? Is this what my feet looked like a year ago? What's the difference? Has there been any changes? And infections. If we do get a break to the skin, you know, has the bacterial infection gone in? We need to look for signs of infection, red, hot, swollen feet. Um, you, we've all fallen over and grazed our knee as a child. That healing process, that kind of redness, the scab should form. But if it's not forming properly, then that's a problem. Um, bacterial infections, fungal infections, of course, athlete's foot is a common problem on the feet. Um, and viral infections such as COVID, we've seen COVID toe. Um, and actually, so that's showing that the virus could be on the skin as well. So actually, it's all these things we need to look out for when we think about um, number two, our skin and nails. So we've had number one, which is the shape. Number two is skin and nails. Number three is circulation. So when we think about sick, we need good blood supply to help heal any wound. All the nutrients that comes in through the blood, all the oxygen that comes through the blood feeds that healthy tissue, keeps our muscles working, goes through our arteries. Um, and if our arteries are blocked in any way, um, or we've got very cold feet from maybe Raynard's, and actually the circulation can be a problem. So we, to, to help look at the feet, to assess the feet, you look at the two of them together. Because if there's a problem with circulation, although in some conditions it might be in both, usually if there's a big problem, you'll see it more in one than the other. So you've got a good marker there. So you look at the feet. Um, do they look dusky? Do they look blue? Um, are they cool to touch? Are they hot to touch? Are they sweaty? Um, you know, does the, does the, the nails, do they look brittle? 
does the foot look viable? Does the tissue look viable and healthy? Is it start? Is there some muscle wastage? You know, what's going on with what's it, what it looks like? You know, and one way to test for circulation, if we've looked at the foot and we're sort of thinking, what well, looks okay, we'll just test for the pulses in the feet. And um, we've got two main pulses that we check when it comes to circulation. And you, it's probably a little bit difficult to do it yourself because you'd use your fingers and often you can feel your own pulse through your finger. But you could try or you could ask your, your friend or your family member to try. And actually you test for two pulses. One's called the posterior tibial pulse and the other one's called the dorsalis pedis pulse. Posterior meaning you're behind and tibial being the tibial pulse. So your tibia is your bone in your leg. So that's the one that comes down the front of the foot, um, at the back of the foot rather. And the dorsalis pedis is on the top and of the foot. So it's inside of the foot and top of the foot. And there's those two pulses there. The posterior tibial sits just behind the ankle, comes down at the back of the tibia, the bone there, and the dorsalis pedis uh, sits on the top of the foot. And to the right hand of the screen, the picture, or my screen anyway, the picture here is of, a, of somebody trying to feel those pulses. So feeling with your fingers on the top of the foot and then using the inside just to glass, cross, sort of grab behind the uh, ankle bone just to see if you can feel that pulse in there um, and if you can feel them bounding away then that's a good sign that you've got some circulation in your feet um, and actually that the arteries are working well now for the healthcare professionals in, in the room you obviously if you can't feel these things you need to alert people but we know there are other tests that we can do to check for circulation things like ankle brachial pressures uh, doppler waveforms um, and even toe pressures now we're using as well. So the basic one would be to check to see if you can feel the pulses. And if you can't, then to go on to other diagnostic tests. If you're a patient at home and you're worried about your circulation, you can always ask a healthcare professional to help you to check or ask someone just to check for you. So that was number three. Number four is sensation. So there are two main types of peripheral nerves in the body. Peripheral means away from the central nervous system. So any nerves that might be in our arms and our legs. And those are sensory and motor nerves. So the sensory nerves are the ones that allow us to feel touch. Um, things like if we uh, got uh, stood on a stone, if we had a too tight a shoe on, uh, if we got a little blister. Um, and just a general light touch and a vibration, motor nerves tend to help move the body. So they tend to move the, move the limbs themselves. Um, so there can be conditions like ataxias or uh, if somebody has a spinal cord problem that they might not then be able to move their limbs. They would be a sort of uh, maybe in a wheelchair. So that'd be a motor nerve issue. And um, they may have sensory problems as well. But um, people, for example, with type 2 diabetes, 50% might develop tend to know about it quite quickly because you wouldn't be able to walk but to be able to feel your feet it might not be something you pick up straight away so that's the sensory nerve there um, but one way to check to see the sensory nerve is actually something called the Ipswich touch test and the Ipswich touch test um, is a very simple tool that we can use just to assess whether you can feel your feet and this can be done without any instruments at all so it's just using the, the tip of your finger and lightly pressing on the end of the big toe, the middle toe, and the little toe. Now, you can't really do this on yourself because you would know when you were doing it, but you could ask a friend to do it, or you could ask a nurse or a carer to do it for you. Or if you're a nurse in a hospital, you could actually use this to test your patients. It's not the most quantifiable test ever, but I think it's probably quite normal to say, if you can't feel somebody touching your feet, there's probably something wrong with your foot. So then of course, it's quite wise then to get that um, checked out and assessed. So just use the tip, the pad of your finger to do the first, the third and the fifth toe. But remember to tell the patient or your friend or your colleague to just turn away so that they don't see you doing it. Otherwise, they'll know when you're touching and then you probably just lose the sensitivity of the test. So that's number four. So we've got shape number one, skin and nails two, circulation three, sensation four. And the last one is footwear. So we need to be thinking about our footwear. Uh, the, the reason we wear footwear is to sort of support and to stabilize the feet uh, and a good shoe will shock absorb. Now, I spoke at the beginning about the foot being a wonderful, um, a wonderfully functional uh, part of the body, which goes over all sorts of terrains. And actually, if you think about it, when we were on grass, that was quite soft and spongy. Um, and so we've gone into sort of harder floors now. So we do need a shock absorbing sole. That's why we put shoes on our feet when we go out. And during COVID, a lot of us have actually not worn our shoes much. 
Uh, we've probably worn a slipper. Uh, and actually, some of us have developed things like plantar fasciitis, pain in the heel or under the foot, because it's not had the support that it may have been used to before. So it's quite important to make sure that we still maintain good function of our feet by maybe having a house shoe. Um, and of course, the sole will protect you from standing on anything. So we always, as podiatrists, advocate either a really good slipper uh, or a nice house shoe and one that you can put on and off very easily, one with a Velcro or a buckle. I'll show you a couple of examples of shoes here. Now, they may not be necessarily what you see down the catwalk, but actually these are the ones that will allow you to walk for quite some way. You know, you're not going to be able to walk in a high heel around Tesco's for very long, um, but you might be able to if you popped in a nice pair of trainers. But just the look of these, um, you know, just look at the design of these shoes. It's not really about the colour or the, the fastening or, or, the, or even, you know, it, you might not necessarily want a sandal that shows your toes, but it's really about the uh, sections that are here in the footwear. So the nice rubbery soles, all of these have got a nice rubbery shock, shock absorbing sole. They've all got a fastening, which means they're not going to slip off your foot. They're going to stay on your foot. So if you're unsteady on your feet, they're going to stay on. Um, you can rely on them being them. They're not going to just slip off suddenly if you sort of have to change direction all of a sudden or you go down a curb. They're not going to fall off. Um, they're all kind of, um, well, the one here in the middle with the sandals, you can see there's a nice area there where the toes aren't lapping over the edge. That's important because actually a shoe should protect your toes as well. The toe boxes on the other shoes are quite deep. So, if, you know, if any, we do tend to find a lot of fashionable shoes tend to have a, a shallow toe box and often we can end up sort of really squashing our feet in. So just have a little think about the shape of your foot, which we mentioned at the beginning, and then actually what footwear you've got at home and what you're using. So that was our five point assessment. Um, I'll go back to that at the very end, but it was shape, skin and, and nails, circulation, um, sensation and footwear. So foot care then, what do we need to think about when it comes to good foot care? So it's popping the socks and shoes off every day, take them off. Um, if you're on the wards, pop them all your patients uh, shoes off and socks off as well. Have a little look at the whole foot. Literally take it, take the foot into your hand if you can. If you can lift it up somehow, look at the bottom of your foot, round the back of the heel, in between the toes, um, and then give them a good wash. Warm, soapy water. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. Um, it can just be any, you know, but do make sure you get in between and give them a good clean. But as well as giving them a good clean, you need to make sure you thoroughly dry them. One of the problems that we tend to find uh, is it's quite difficult sometimes to get down to the feet to really dry well in between the toes. Um, some people have found ways of scrunching up the towel under their feet if they can. Um, other people have asked for help, um, but really dry in between the toes because it's where the, the fungal infections tend to sit. Uh, if we if we tend to develop anything and also if we don't dry properly we can get very wet skin and then actually it can split in between the toes so it's really important that we dry thoroughly keep the skin well hydrated so protect the skin um, by putting moisture on it um, it can be any any moisturizing cream that you've got at home if you like you know use up what you've got or you can try as long as it's not going to irritate your skin obviously but I would presume you you have plenty of creams that are, are non-irritant to yourselves um, and you know it can be non-perfumed would be an ideal one and maybe something with urea in it urea is a keratolytic which means it breaks down keratin and keratin forms the basis of our skin and nails um, so if you've got a hard skin or a, a dry skin you can use a urea based cream that can go around the back of the heels Try not to put creams in between the toes, because if you think then you'd be making it wetter again. Um, and so then you might be creating a bit of a boggy mess in between the toes. So just try and use it around the back of the heels, on top of the foot, underneath the foot, um, and just try and avoid those little toe creases. Um, and wear, of course, suitable socks and shoes. So make sure you, you know, nice shoe and a sock. A good sock has a majority of a... Um, a natural fiber in it. So majority cotton, a majority wool, majority bamboo, whichever you prefer, but try the polyesters tend to make our feet sweat a little. So actually, if you've got a skin that sweats quite a bit, you might find that's not uh, particularly helpful for you. So you might find a cotton sock would be better. Of course, you can wear two pairs of socks to trap layers if you get cold feet. Um, but just try and think about the socks that you're, you're using. And, and the socks protect us from rubs from the shoe. I know not everybody likes to wear socks, um, but if you can try, that would be 
you know, that would probably protect the skin a little bit better. So inspect the foot, keep it nice and clean, put some cream on it to rehydrate it. Look at your skin in general and recognize any problems that you might have, you know, and get someone to help you and then put good socks and shoes on. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit and you probably have heard quite a bit this week, or at least you will do on trying to reduce the pressure. But if we're in a hospital based environment or if we're at home and being cared for at home, or if you're caring for an elderly parent or relative, um, then actually it's a it's really handy to think about pressure. If they're sitting at home for long periods of time, we need to identify any risk and prevent skin damage um, and where skin is broken down there's a risk evidence so we need to think about preventing that so we need to look at the feet and try and think right what could cause pressure are there any bony problems with the shape of the foot is the skin broken in any way do they have good circulation um what's their sensation like will they be able to tell me if they had developed a problem um and what footwear have we got to help help them mobilize so we'd be thinking about reducing pressure um from the on the feet themselves to prevent any ulcers or further injury and ways that we do this within the hospital setting and you may have this at home as well is thinking about offloading devices so you can see the picture of the of the person here lying on their back and you can see all those areas of pressure that might develop in the foot particularly it's the heels uh, that we get a lot of pressure from and we also get a lot of pressure on the fifth toes so um you know, it could, from that can often be from rubbing and of shoes. So think about pressure. If you're lying in bed, you can have offloading devices. This is one example in the middle of an offloading device. Um, and so it actually can take the pressure off the heel and actually allow uh, pre or prevent the, the any ulcers that might happen. An airflow bed is another way of taking the pressure off. Um, and that just sort of gently kind of dynamically moves air across the body and just takes the pressure away so if you know that your patient or your loved one or yourself has a circulatory problem or has an uh, can't feel their feet very well you need to be thinking about pressure and how you can try and offload these things i've just seen that there's some people in the chat and i'm not sure how to do that with my screen on here so i might answer these questions at the end if that's okay i'm sorry that it's not been too interactive um just seeing if I can find a way of doing it. I can't. I'll do it at the end. That's, uh, I, but I will pick up on some of these questions. So thanks for asking and keep doing it because I will check. Um, so foot assessment. So what? Why bother? What's so important about feet? Well, we're looking to try and prevent any problems happening, preventing infection, preventing in wounds, preventing pain and discomfort and preventing any immobility. Because our feet, as we said at the beginning, are here from pretty much from cradle to grave. I mean, we're only some people walk very early on um, and some people take a little longer. Um, so it's, we really need to make sure our feet are healthy. So doing that five point check, shape, skin, nails, circulation, neuropathy and footwear will hopefully try and prevent a lot of these problems happening. And prevention is key because as soon as you start developing problems, you may be prone to developing more in the future. So making a, you know, make a difference where possible. We need to support people to look after their own feet, record findings accurately in care records. So if you're a carer, make sure you say, I noticed this bruise, identify it straight away and then report it on, you know, refer on. Who do you refer to? What are your referral pathways? What access have you got? So if you're a patient and you think, hey, my foot's not right, contact your GP, contact your local community services and just report the problem. If you're in a hospital setting, um, if you're a healthcare assistant, report that into the nurse. Who's your next in charge? If you're a nurse with these problems, have you got a tissue viability nurse around? Have you got a podiatrist around? Um, report it to the doctor. Because if you're discharging people onto the wall, you know, at home, then you need to make sure they've got everything they need to actually um, keep their feet healthy and prevent that deterioration. And if it was identified that you first noticed it, then it's going to come back down the chain. So it's really important that you then ident you say, yes, I noticed that. I didn't, you don't have to know what it is. You don't have to say this is this diagnosis. You can just say there was a problem here and I've referred it on. It's the identifying that referral pathway that's really important. Report, um, so I've said report any immediate concerns, immediate concerns especially, so infection, um, that, um, wounds that won't heal, poor circulation. If you've noticed the toes gone very blue or black, what's going on? You know, that's not normal to then have a blue or black, suddenly a blue or black toe. Um, if there's a loss of sensation, just report these things. 
and refer to the appropriate teams if you're able to. If you're in the healthcare setting and you know what teams to refer to and you've got access, then please do. So I think the message, your five point assessment, shape, skin, nails, circulation, neuropathy, footwear. So check the feet, protect them by cleaning them well and doing a good regime during the day. So good socks, good shoes, well hydrated and then refer on if there's a problem. So check, protect, and refer. And if you can actually uh, consider all these problems, you know, consider all these aspects, then you could actually prevent ulceration and actually ultimately amputation. So just a recap of the aims, um, how to do a foot check, that five foot check, shape, skin, nails, circulation, sensation, and footwear, five things to think about. Good foot care regime, uh, pop the socks off every day, give the feet a good wash, uh, dry them thoroughly, cream around the heels um, and make sure that you put nice socks and shoes back on or offload properly if they're lying in a bed, put a pillow under the ankles, get the heels off if that's what's needed if you haven't got an offloading boot or a mattress um, and then of course tell anybody if you've noticed a problem or if you think this isn't right or this has changed. Some people take photos of their feet quite regularly, that's a good way of doing it, put it into a little um, little album and keep your foot album so you just you know but it's identifying the problem and seeing where it's all you know where things may change now we are meant to change as we go on through years but it shouldn't change so quickly and it shouldn't then be detrimental to our health so just make sure people are aware of what's going on check protect and refer so I'll, what I'll do now is I'll just come back and I'll stop sharing my screen thanks for listening um, and I will answer any questions I can find in the chat um, so you've got, uh, I've got a lady here, I've got some chronic issues with my legs, um, in the summer I tried to increase my activity by walking, unfortunately I developed plantar fasciitis and now walking have any tips. So plantar fasciitis is an inflammation of the plantar fascia, it's the tissue that sits, uh, well it's an inflexible tissue actually that sits underneath the foot. Um, Good footwear is usually a really great one for plantar fasciitis. Uh, Anti-inflammatory to so try and reduce that inflammation if you're able to take those. Some people use ice at the very beginning when it's first acute problem and try and roll balls under their feet to sort of try and stretch it out. Um, but it, probably my biggest tip would be to sort of alert somebody that you've developed plantar fasciitis and maybe see a podiatrist if you can. Um, I've got an eczema on your feet, triggered by wearing compression stockings and making this hard, but things are dealing with this. I think with the eczema, you need to probably speak to a dermatologist um, or at least the practice nurse to get you referred. Um, compression stockings have that polyester in them. So sometimes that can react, but there must be other compression stockings. There are gonna be other sessions in the week um, that will be dealing with compression stockings and hosiery. So maybe you could join one of those sessions and see whether or not there's um, any answers that would that could come from that but that's a really good point and actually I think probably another referral I think what I'm seeing here just from just these two questions is actually access to services so actually I, you've identified a problem and I know you can email your GPs nowadays maybe email email the GPs and see if they'll refer you on um, to people that have got a bit more idea as to other um, you know to give you some tips on how to help it um, uh, so another question here, foot advice in a healthcare setting such as GP surgeries often focus on diabetics. How can we improve foot education generally in these settings? That's a, a really good point. So um, the, the NHS has focused a lot on patients with diabetes and foot care. And that is because there's a very, that there has been identified a very high risk of ulceration and leading on to minor or major amputation related to patients with diabetes. Now that's not to say that every patient will develop that problem. But because there was such a high risk attached to it, the government put in a lot of funding into delivering these services. Um, as in the, within the community settings now, though, there has been a turn of the tide. And we've noticed that actually people with limb ischemia, so problems with circulation, actually are now developing a lot of problems. Uh, so actually, there's a new national wound care strategy program that's being developed. Uh, which is going to start implementing education and triaging centres across the UK to try and help people with any problems at all that will then go in and get assessed. And that will be looking you know, predominantly really at those people with circulatory issues. But improving education, I think it's talking to each other, raising the awareness, saying that you've got a problem, not being embarrassed to ask the questions. And as podiatrists and as nurses, as carers, um, as friends and family, just to ask people, how are you getting on? I've noticed you're not walking properly at the moment. Is everything okay? Um, or, you know, your, your shoes look a little bit loose. Can I help 
you with those. I think it's sort of bringing it back to the community to try and help each other, um, gaining some resilience from, from knowing each other probably is, is a good way of um, improving some education. Um, how knowledgeable are pharmacists on foot health? The advice you've given this morning is ideal for community pharmacies to have available and to pass on. Is Legs Matter doing any work with pharmacies? Yes, uh, Legs Matter is doing some work with pharmacies and pharmacists actually are a great source of knowledge, a font actually. I love my community pharmacists. Um, not only can they tell you whether or not you're on the right medication, whether or not any medication interacts, they can take uh, all sorts of things for you. They can take blood pressure for you. They can do, uh, some of them I think are giving flu jabs, COVID jabs. Um, they've got loads of knowledge on creams. They stock creams. They, they stock compression. There's loads of um, there's loads of information that pharmacists can give. And actually, I think they're a bit of an untapped source. So Legs Matter really are working with them. Um, I'm sure the National Wound Care Strategy Programme will also be working with them. As, as clinicians, we should all be working together. And they're another allied health professional, like myself, podiatrist and allied health professional. Uh, and we're all working together at the moment to try and you know, raise awareness of health. So that's a really good point. Thanks, Sarah. Um, and how can care homes access this information? Um, well, you can go online to our Legs Matter website um, and the Legs Matter website will have all of these uh, slides on them. So if you ask a carer in a home, you can access uh, the Legs Matter tips, uh, which are on the website, but also you can get some posters. Um, Diabetes UK, of course, if you're looking into the diabetes, so things have information leaflets there. Um, and your local GP services, NHS England, should have access to any leaflets on their websites as well. But certainly, if you're interested in having any more information or care home specifically, get in contact because I'm more than happy to try and put something together for you or do a talk for you just to sort of get some CPD. That would be really useful. So useful for me because as a podiatrist, I want to promote all this stuff. So, you know, do please do get in contact. No, and no question is silly. Um, thanks, Christy. I'm happy to give any tips, actually. So I'm hoping that really helps. I'm just going to go through to the, the chat. Um, how do we off access offloading devices as a carer? Now, I guess it's mainly through the, well, this, again, we spoke about the pharmacist. You could see if the pharmacist, if you were a private carer, whether or not the pharmacist would be able to access any, any of that for you. Podiatrists, of course, are a great font for getting offloading devices. We make many offloading devices ourselves. So if you're in contact with a podiatrist, there may be a bespoke device that we can use. The GP, the community nurses, if you go into hospital and you feel that you need an offloading device, they might be able to give you some of that before you're discharged. Um, so as a care, I think it's raising the awareness, saying what you need and not being afraid to ask. Um, you don't need to be an expert to ask for these things. You just need to be knowledgeable in knowing that there's a problem um, or that you're concerned. So raise the awareness all the time. I think that's probably the biggest message. Um, there aren't any more questions in the chat. So I hope this has been a useful uh, sort of half an hour for you. Um, the session I think will be available on sort of replay, playback, uh, when I'm, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. I'm part of the coalition here at Legs Matter uh, and we're all linked together. So any, any questions just fire away and I'm happy to answer them sort of after this session. So thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to talk to everybody. Um,